Hello there. Aza here. Today I'm gonna talk about something that I think mm, mainly a lot of players probably don't even understand why. But I'll just make this video in a position like uh, so that it's actually um, digestible for even people who never played NGS before. And I'm going to tell you why people actually stick around with the game despite its flaws. Because it, apparently everybody just talk about like the issues with the game. They talk about the issues about the community. They talk about the negativity stuff. They talk about the positive stuff. And then they did not discuss about the, the main reason of why people actually stuck with the game at all. Which is quite surprising because it's been quite a long while. I think two years, if I'm not wrong, that this game existed. And all I'm just hearing is just, oh, it's a, it's a bad game. It's, it's a dead game or something. But uh, no, there's a lot of life services that has died, literally, in the whole two years period of this game existing. So no, it's not dead, unfortunately. And I know some people are going to say like, why, why do I say like this? But the game just couldn't change at all if the Japanese player base is still balling. So I, I think even the global side as well is also balling. So I don't really think the game is dying. It's more like how the game was built upon that has caused it to actually stagnate in terms of like player base. Alright then, however, I still need to like make a positive video instead of like a bad video. So let's just start with this, I guess. Alright, the first point is basically number one comfy and cozy life service model. Have you realized that playing New Genesis is somehow like uh, not a stressful game at all? Like, sure, there is some stuff you need to like watch out, like power level and your battle power and your gears and maybe try not to afk in certain maps or maybe encountering a certain player that is toxic somehow and you can just block them and maybe some bots that you can see here and there some time to time but really if you look at the whole game and all the, the whole the whole vibe of the game is basically like uh, uh it's it's a very chill game yeah, sure, there is like very intense action that you need to, you know, still put some effort in playing if you are to do the combat sections and stuff and maybe like fight against like something like very hard, like a hard boss like Dark Vow Solus. Yeah, sure, it's definitely going to require you to play harder. But after that, well, you just go back to the lobbies, you can just go back to the cities and you just chill out. Uh, I mean, technically, it's because this game is just so, you know, relaxing, I guess. It doesn't make me feel like I'm actually playing the job of a game, if you know what I mean, of a live service game. A lot of other live service games out there, if you want to compare them explicitly to New Genesis, you would then realize that, hey, I, I, need, to, I need to actually dedicate more time to play other live services in comparison in comparison to like New Genesis. Why should I play the other live services that wants me to log in every single day? Because um, I mean, I might as well just stop playing those games because they are jobs, they are hamster wheels and, and stuff like that. I might as well just do some dailies and weeklies on my own time in New Genesis. I guess this is probably one of the main reasons that the player base just don't exactly understand why they're still sticking with the game. But the the this this kind of point is probably going to be varied from player to player because I don't really think all players are playing the game just for the sake of just the cozy and comfy life service model. Now, this is a good model to be honest i wish all life service games out there also utilize the same form of a life service model 
that doesn't give way too much FOMO so that players can just log in whenever they wanted to and play whenever they wanted to without any stress. The only thing that they probably need to catch up on is their gear and battle power and that's it. And other than that, nothing much. It, it's just a simple and cozy game. It, it, apparently people are just taking this game way too seriously apparently and just assume that this is a huge MMORPG with tons of content but actually nah, let's not, let's not beat the bush around here. Okay, the second point that I want to talk about this game is that it has this weird notion of like it provides a false hope and a potential hype machine. Now, okay, I know some people might say like, wait, but the engine's headline has been very, very bad since the launch, actually. Um, yeah, sure. But at the same time, you look at the game with the foundation that is available in like New Genesis, you would actually think like, oh, wow. If they add contents to the open fields, if they, you know, update all of the older contents and transform them into playable, replayable content, it has the potential to actually be a much better game. But the thing is, the developers are not doing that. Instead, they are now very, very focused on creating new content and that's the only thing that they are doing now. New content, of course, includes the new AC scratches and SG scratches, of course. It does not mean just gameplay content, of course. And that is why, you know, they have seasonal events so that they can have out their development time. Because I think their developers are just not... They don't have enough developers to, like, work on the game, I think. That's, that's why they are trying to, like buy more time by using a you know a, a seasonal month again i just i just wish they actually hire more developers and that's it because what's the point of forcing like just a small team to create a huge live service game to have like a small little contents at all like come on i i think this team is very dedicated and they should they deserve to get at least more developers to help them. And the next point is probably the one point that everybody has known all the time when they're playing this game. The social aspects of the game or literally the fashion, the, 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 the social features like the creative space and the uh, the capabilities of you to doing emotes and placing all these uh, weird stamps and uh, symbol arts and uh, even like uh, hologram stuff i guess all these things are not part of the is it's actually like look like a part of the gameplay but actually it's more towards the social elements of this game that it makes those players actually come back just because of these features. Now, don't get me wrong, a lot of people still don't really like these systems because they think that the developers should put more time into creating more gameplay-related content in comparison of all these features that we got. But the fact is, once you see the Twitter feed of all the creative spaces that you've seen that players can make, you just realize, oh, it's another kind of like it's, it's like a certain casual kind of a sandbox where players can build whatever creations they wanted to like in minecraft but in a higher definition mode and uh, and something that they can interact with somehow but not exactly way too complex that even a controller cannot actually do it so it's all these social features that has allowed this game to thrive alongside with the very very robust customization that has caused i think a lot of players to have like this uh sunk wallet fallacy to like uh just keep continuing to play this game even if there's no content at all which is surprising because if you look at a lot of live services they don't have the flexibility for you to customize your character 
in such an extent like New Genesis. Sure, other games have like color palettes for them to change their armors to, but for the most part, their armors are just set in stone. In order to get new looking armors or better looking armors, you need to usually fork out a lot of money in order to just buy a skin or buy a certain part of the cosmetic from the cash shop, which is usually untradeable for the most part. So New Genesis provides us the flexibility that you can actually sell your AC scratches or AC items that you don't really need back to the player base and free to play players can of course capitalize and grab them for cheap and for free. And that is why this whole social economy existed. And that is the reason why hairstyles and certain clothing and emotes are very, very high in value because of how rare they are and how high demand they are because of how nice looking they are according to like the whole general consensus of the whole fashion community in the game, I guess. However, this whole social element is a detriment to the game as well because that means that the developers will continuously develop more fashion items instead of actually focusing their efforts on like uh, creating more gameplay elements. But so far, looking at how how their pace of creating new fashion is not even halted at all, or never actually like slow down or even delayed even once, that means they just realize people are still going to just AC scratching all the time despite having no content and this is going to bring a detriment to the game because the gameplay players who don't even care about the fashion stuff is just going to ignore this whole system and they just assume the game is pointless to play because there's no gameplay elements at all yeah it's a double edge kind of a situation so that's very very unfortunate that the NGS devs decided to go forward with more fashion stuff instead of gameplay because do you remember that this game is still titled Fantasy Star and that is like a gameplay title IP from Sega from back in 20 years ago so I still don't understand why they still continue to do this but whatever I guess everybody just loves the flexibility of fashion as a bonus I suppose alright the next segment Number 4. The gameplay is streamlined from base PSO2. Oh boy. Okay. Say what you will about NGS and say how shallow it is in comparison with base PSO2. But I'll be I'll be spewing out something that is very controversial now. New Genesis is the product of streamlining PSO2. Like I mean the base PSO2 game, okay? Now, let, let's, let's be real here. Base PSO2 is a very, very simplistic game. You have a lobby of a player hop center that everybody just hangs out at. You have a quest counter to just go into different instances. And then you have a lot of exchange NPCs that are either, you know, providing exchange for dead materials or dead modes and uh, a lot of other modes that a lot of players just don't even remember existing at all is just being sidelined because nobody cares about those stuff I guess and unfortunately because of these issues here where there's just way too much NPCs to exchange from there's just way too much badges and resources to exchange to for you to actually create a weapon not to mention Zig alone has like so many options for you to exchange a 15 star weapon or an armor set and, and, and camos and stuff like that that a lot of players probably will or get overwhelmed instantly if they see that for themselves well for the most part they might actually prefer new genesis oh boy okay okay calm down calm down okay that does not mean that new genesis has done it correctly now, sure, they already created they, the, the, one of the very important things they streamlined that I actually personally enjoyed is the Altman, Altman's, uh, the Altman capsule system 
and the S grade Auckland's are like literally become like fixers, I guess. So it's much more simpler now for you to understand how to build a weapon in comparison to base PSO2, where there's so many RNG involved that you would rather die instead of like augment the weapon because it's just so hard to do that you want to get the best in slot augment stuff onto your weapon do you want to get the magical 200 percent potency oh boy you better try to read some guides here and there now huh? i guess you need to farm this farm that buy this buy that exchange this exchange that and then yeah there's a lot of damn steps to just augment by the way and not to mention certain weapons need to upgrade it or exchange into the higher versions of themselves oh wow okay those systems are really really bad if you were to look it at the point of view of a new player and it's just so complicated that is why the game the base PSO2 game has an exchange system that allows beginners to get 15 star weapons for free and yep you guess it, that's the reason why they actually give out so much stuff back then. Of course, you know, the gameplay streamlining is also going to cause us to have a much lesser PAs, much lesser techniques to use, much lesser abilities or skills that I think in the base game has a lot of those stuff. A lack of variety in like potentials of weapons because they want the streamline in such a way that all weapons are workable and usable no matter what the rarity is and it just sucks you know to look at it because now the only differences that you can see from each weapon is basically their percentage of damage differences and so far the only weapon that is able to surpass any weapon at all is seasonal weapons so if you are a new player you might as well just get the new Alcyon weapon because it's, it's way better than like when it's in this seasonal month it's just the most powerful weapon there is if you can actually get the you know plus 70 version of the weapon anyways and the final topic for today bad trends equals bad game so you know new genesis is basically that kind of game that has followed the footsteps of like oh the open world is such a great game genre let's create a live service open world game right guys oh boy oh dear people would rather play the base pso2 um randomly generated open exploration maps in comparison to like the open fields that is available currently in new genesis the fact that they actually chase this whole Zelda Breath of the Wild kind of aspect of the game and also you know chase the trends of Genshin Impact it's the worst this is literally like the both worst kind of uh, elements to actually copy from I would rather if they copy something like Elden Ring but well of course they just have no resources to do that apparently uh, it just sucks that they have to copy elements from games that doesn't work that well when you put it into live service mode because a live service game would always have infinite the player base would always expect an infinite amount of content because it's called a live service and the devs are constantly you know supporting the game that is why the expectations of a game is literally like an mmo even if it's just a simple mm it's just a simple morpg or something because yep that's literally what a lot of those negative people are always thinking about this game needs more gameplay elements apparently now don't, don't get me wrong the game has a lot of gameplay elements already it's just that i don't understand why they don't update their older contents there's so many dead contents in Kowaris that i i just don't understand why they can just patch it and make it like a new area for a specific new item drop or new rare weapon that is only exclusively dropped in Kovaris or something. Like, like, come on, guys! Don't just slap Taisa weapon on all urgent quests and say that's all right. You know, 
like like come on man you can have like a tisa type k you have a tisa type a you can have a tisa type r or something like that at least like have each regions here have unique drops that are only exclusively found in those regions instead of just putting everything into like alio or the lasio whatever like, like like come on guys i understand that we don't really want to explore all these things but it's because you design it in such a way that there's nothing else to do in these open fields in this the rest of the map that is why we don't explore these maps because we all go for the lucio we go go for the limited time quest because you keep putting all the valuable stuff inside all these instances instead of like you know updating the rest of the whole freaking map because at this point you might as well just delete the rest of the island and have us access the seal exploration and that will be like enough for all player base at all because yeah because the open view is literally round wasted because you just followed a bad trend of the open world genre which is the genshin impact syndrome or something which is to be honest they they work very well in back in 2021 and 2020 but nowadays people are tired of open world games people are fed up with open world games they they would rather play a closed game that has much more content in comparison to like a huge open world game if you look at the current like best games out there they, they are not exactly open world games they are just instance games and they are performing well even better than like the previous years open world games okay so i just wish there would be a better trend for new genesis to follow instead of like this but there's just one request i wanted to like talk to them about it it's just that hey I remember the the whole AIS robot stuff I would wish you to maybe you know follow the armored core 6 trend yeah follow that trend then I think the game will probably become a successful game already and uh, yeah that's all I guess I wanted to talk about I don't really want to like pull this video even longer because I think I'm just rambling at this point but these are all the five reasons of why the player base are still sticking with the game even if it has a lot of flaws and i believe you know i just wish that the developers can at least look at all these options here and all these issues that we present for them and i just wish that they are able to fix the game accordingly to the feedback section by the way that, that a lot of players are putting in the reason why the game is currently just doing very bad is because most of the fantasy star fans are gameplay players they are not exactly like fashion players unfortunately and it's be just because the japanese players love the fashion aspect it doesn't mean that the global players is going to like it okay because this is like two different demographics you have to remember that and make sure to at least give the global side more resources give us more news give us more transparency in terms of what kind of content is coming up next so we content creators can create at least more contents for the game because all we wanted is for the game to become the best game there is nothing else and nothing less and unfortunately we have way too much co content creators but not much content at all so it's kind of in a very very weird situation so I just hope that they can look at this video and at least understand where a lot of those players are coming from and I just wish we can start to gain more new players as long as we fix all the issues has been listed in this video. Also remember to watch the video about how to actually really salvage the game uh, which is my previous NGS video I guess because yeah there's really nothing much for me to cover the last month as well so there's that you i just wish you guys to watch that video as well in com and then also you know watch this in to actually get a complete picture of why players are still playing this game even if it's uh, kind of like a bad relationship i guess so that is all my honest opinions and my honest takes on why player base are still playing this game 
even if the game is such a, in a such a flawed kind of a situation. That is all. Sayonara.